All right, everybody. Today we're going to be focusing on figuring out how to write sine and cosine functions based off of if we're given an amplitude and a period. Okay? Now, if we go back to our graphing calculator, which graph is this right here? That's y equals cosine of x, correct? All right? So right here, this is your y equals cosine of x function. And what was the amplitude of this? So the amplitude is 1, and what's the period? Period is 2 pi. So this right here is 0 pi, this right here is 2 pi. That is your cosine graph. If I go y equals, clear this out, and I do y equals sine of x, then hit graph. Your amplitude is still 1, it gets up to a 1, down to a negative 1, and it finishes its whole cycle in. 2 pi. So its period is 2 pi. But if we go to our problem, our problem is write an equation of a sine function with this amplitude and this period. So right now we have y equals a sine of k times theta. And theta is our x. So here we go. What is our amplitude in this one? Because our amplitude is equal to a 3. So what I want you guys to understand is you could actually have two equations. You could say y equals 3 sine of k theta, or you could say y equals negative 3 sine of k theta. Because if your amplitude is 3, I need you guys to understand the absolute value of your a, right here, the absolute value is equal to this concept called the amplitude. So whether or not, all right, whether or not I typed in y equals and I typed in 3 sine of x, or I typed in negative 3 sine of x, what's your amplitude in either case? Your amplitude is technically equal to the number 3. Now I've got to change my window a little bit. What do I got to change my y minimum to? Negative 3, my y maximum to a 3. Hit graph. There's your first one. This is y equals 3 sine of x. There's your second one, y equals negative 3 sine of x. So I want you to look at these real quick. This is y equals 3 sine of x, which is the same graph if I said y equals 3 sine of theta. And what does this one represent? Negative 3 sine of x. Y equals negative 3 sine of theta. What's the difference between the blue and the red? What's the only difference between them? One of, them's neg one of them had a negative to begin with, and one of them had a positive. Okay? When you go back, There's our positive sine of x, so it starts at 0 and it goes up. Our negative sine of x starts down. So, let's go back to our problem, right here. If we have a period, everybody, if we have a period that equals 2 pi, what's the formula for the period? The formula for the period will always be 2 pi divided by our k value. So 2 pi divided by k equals our period of 2 pi over 1. What does k have to equal in this particular case? 1. So our k value is simply equal to the number 1. So your final answer to this problem is y equals 3 sine of Theta. Or you could put y equals negative 3 sine of theta. These are your two possible answer choices for number 5. Using this concept, what we're going to do is we're going to look at problem number 6. We're going to zoom in on it. Okay? We're going to write a sine of x function. 
So the first thing I want you to do is write y equals a sine of k theta. That's the first thing I want you to write. y equals a sine of k theta. All right? The absolute value of a is equal to an 8.5, which means the amplitude, everybody, is equal to 8.5. So technically, we could actually have two functions. What's one of our answers for this? We have two answers we could have. One of them could be positive 8.5. Good. And then negative 8.5. What's the only thing we have to do in this problem? Basically solve for what? What do we have to solve for? Okay. Solve for what? Solve for k. And the formula that you're going to use is 2 pi over k. Well, what's our period in this particular case? Our period is 6 pi right here. That's our period. So we actually have to set this equal to 6 pi over 1. 6 pi over 1. Now, right now, let's get our cross products. So, Caitlin, could you tell me one of the cross products right here? Um, 2 pi. 2 pi. That is one of our cross products on the right. Right now, we're finding our cross products. And what is the other cross product? 6 pi. 6 pi k. Now, what are we trying to solve for in this one? We're solving for k. So, what do we have to divide both sides by to solve for k? This 6 pi cancels out this 6 pi. The pi's cancel out, and we're left with 2 over 6. But what is 2 over 6 reduced to? 1 over 3. So I, I need you guys to write the k value is simply equal to 1 third. So what do we got to do with this 1 third right here? We got to take it and plug it in where? Plug it in for k right here, and plug it in for k right there. So right here, you're plugging in a one-third. And right here, you're plugging in one-third. So we have two answers. One of our answers is y equals 8.5 sine of theta over 3. Because one-third of theta is theta over 3. What's our other answer? Number four. Okay, yeah. Correct. So what I want you to understand is you could actually write this answer or this answer, and I would have given you full credit. Because it said write a sign. Yes. Either either one of these would be your answer. You do the same process for the cosine. Okay? So for example, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. For this one, you do the exact same process, okay? You have an amplitude, you have a period, and you have to solve for your k value. Now let's take a look at our let's take a look at our graph. Alright? I want you guys to do a window. Okay? I want you to start at zero, and I actually for your x maximum, I want you to go six pi. Six pi. Okay? Alright? Your x scale, I want you just to keep it as pi. Your y minimum, go to a negative 9. And your y maximum, go to a positive 9. And then I want you to hit y equals. And I want you guys to type in 8.5 sine and put x divided by 3. And once you type 8.5 sine, x divided by 3, hit graph. And I want you to take a look at it. Maybe by looking at this graph, you guys will have a better understanding of how this works. By the way, this right here goes up, down through zero, all the way down, and back up. Does everybody see how this looks kind of like the y equals sine of x? Right? But now it's bigger. What's the, what's the amplitude from here to there? That's actually 
8.5 and going all the way down. I put it at, by the way, that's a negative 9, that's a positive 9, but it doesn't go all the way up to a 9. And this is still, what, 8.5 units. What did it start at? We started at 0 pi. Where did we finish at? 6 pi. So this period, see how long the period is here? Before, what was the period? The period was at a 2 pi. I'm going to jump back real quick. Here's your original sign of x graph. 0 pi to 2 pi. How far did it go up? 1. How far did it go down? It went down 1 unit. But the period was only from what? 0 to 2 pi. Okay? So what did I have to change in order for us to see a full period? What did I have to change? I had to change my what? I had to change my window settings. So make sure you know how to change your window settings. Okay? The last problem we're going to do together is we're going to do problem number 13 together to help you guys be able to interpret. So I want you guys to look at problem number 13 and put it in your journal. I'm going to zoom in on problem 13 so you know. You're zooming in on problem number 13. There we go. All right, so now that you guys have this drawing in your journal, all right, there's a couple of strategies right here. I want you to look right here at this is the highest point, correct? Yes. So if you drew this going straight across, that should help you with what part of your equation? What should this line going all the way across help you? The amplitude. Very good. So right here, notice, I'm going to make a nice straight line. Okay? And right now, let's interpret from right here to right here, what does that distance appear to be? Yeah. That's what, so what hey, put A right here. Put a equals something. Right now, I want you to write the amplitude, everybody. The amplitude is equal to 1.5. We know the amplitude is 1.5, all right? Because it goes from down right here to a negative 1.5, and it goes up here to a positive 1.5. However, do we start at 0, 0? Yes. Where does it finish? It finishes right over here. This looks very similar to which graph? Y equals sine of x or y equals to cosine of x? What do you guys think? Well, let's just take a look at the y equals sine of x and y equals cosine of x real quick. Alright, we just typed in y equals sine of x. I'm going to change my window. I'm going to start at 0. I'm going to go all the way out to 6 pi. Okay? I'm going to go all the way out to 6 pi. And our x scale is going to be in terms of pi. The only thing I'm going to change is I'm going to change from negative 9 to just say negative 2 to make it a positive 2. So I'm going to hit the graph and take a look at it. Huh. This one starts at 0, goes up, then goes back down, and it finishes its cycle right here. Well, let's check. Let's look at a picture. Look at your picture. Does that start at 0? Yes. What if we hit y equals, type in a negative sine of x. Instead of a positive sine of x, hit a negative sine of x. Be graph. Now take a look at it. Where is it. Instead of going up, where does it start? It goes down instead of up. So right now, what I'd like you guys to do on your paper right here is put your A value, everybody, is a negative one point. Five. That's your A value. So instead of a negative, instead of a positive 1.5, which is your amplitude, your A value is actually a negative 1.5. So part of your answer for Y equals A sine of K theta, you're going to write Y equals negative 1.5 sine. What do we still have to find? K. We still have to solve for k. The period of this function is 4 pi. So I have to set this equal to 4 pi over 1. I have to get my cross products. Our cross products are 2 pi equals 4 pi k. We have to divide both sides by 4 pi. We get k equals 1 half. And here is your final answer.